Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India we are going to understand the traditional root of these practices as we said that we cannot cover the entire country because uh, there are too many in number and that may divert us from our basic focus which is to understand the uh, variety and the stylistic quality of it and that should basically uh, follow a path where we critically look at them, assess them and then appreciate them with proper methodology. So, in a way when we looked at Madhuvani painting in the previous slide, we have seen that there is a traditional root that is connected to it and that was rigidly caste based and uh, whether it is for good or not, but that gave birth to many different visual styles that also provided to the modern painters to be more confident and uh, use variety of styles there. And right now when the caste based restrictions are more or less re removed from the uh, custom, from the practice where nobody is actually bothered because it has it is getting uh, through a very different social and economic condition in today's time. Uh, as like if we go back and just get into the basic thematic uh, aspect and we get back to uh, the story of it, uh, we get to see that uh, it is something that um, a particular zone where the uh, male members of a family were engaged in the agrarian practices where the women they painted things on the walls, floors and uh, also on many different places which is connected to their ceremonial practice. Uh, we feel that this is a time where the artworks uh, are basically uh, appreciated for their visual styles and not for the thematic connections that was there in their traditional route and it is just picked up as a visual style and many of the contemporary artists who do not even belong to a family of uh, the Madhubani, uh, Jetwarpur, Rati and all those places, but they are leaving somewhere else, but they are still appreciating that style and uh, using that style they are learning it and uh, exploiting the virtues of those styles in their for the creative expression. So, that is indeed something which is uh, showing some kind of a perspective for this kind of styles and the style is also so rich and distinctive uh, that it, it's, it was uh, quite inevitable that people would pick up and go for this kind of styles. Uh, I will take another example that is uh, the Kalamkari tradition of Sri Kalahasti. Again, when we go back to the traditional root of it, we see that it has all started in the temple of Sri Kalahasti as a uh, temple tradition. As you know, when we visit a temple, we feel like collecting a souvenir. So, we make the similar deities and their images and sell it uh, in the uh, like at the both sides of the streets, uh, as well as we see a backdrop to decorate uh, inside the Garvagriha and uh, in the places where the worshippers uh, sit uh, for their worships and other prayers. Uh, it is very common that we see lots of wall hangings there that depicts the religious stories and they are often in the mode of narrative stories. So, in the temple of Sri Kalahasti which is very old almost a thousand years old and nearly that. Uh, we see that uh, in that temple many people could not reach the temple because of many different reasons because of their age, the old age uh, people uh, they did not have access to the temple. It was a long way to reach there and it, uh, their health did not permit it. So, for those people it was like uh, as we know about the other temple traditions that uh, the idol used to come down in the form of the uh, backdrop paintings that you have the similar idols 
painted on the backdrops the, and uh, some uh, uh, like um, you know the temple keepers they will bring that they will take it to the regular normal households they will show that to the uh, dwellers of those houses and also narrate the stories of uh, the particular uh, text. So, that way it used to come down and reach common people and that way the tradition survived. And uh, uh, then it also involves the particular uh, tradition of Kalamkari paintings where the method and material is also something very rich and uh, it was traditionally known where they had their own techniques of making the different vegetable dyes. And uh, there are quite a few unique shades that gives it a very different look. Also, we see that the kind of uh, style that they picked up for those artworks were very distinctively recognizable. It gives you a very interesting style and also they used a lot of scriptures, the uh, Telugu scripts mainly, which is from that region and they uh, made the stories initially on uh, those things. So, uh, let us see some of the examples and assess it. So, coming to Shri Kalahasti temple uh, that were the major inspiration for this kind of a painting. What we see that the subject chosen to paint were restricted to gods and goddesses such as Krishna, Brahma, Ganesha, Durga, Kiratarjuna, Lakshmi, Rama, Shiva and Parvati. Kalamkari is a tradition where we see in the picture that a practitioner is painting that with a kalam or a pen made out of a stick and they have a particular way of making this kalam which holds a lot of ink at a time and it goes at a flow and they paint the stories and uh, the illustrations of the stories on the cloth with a flowy linear pattern throughout. So, seen in the picture is a complete Ramayana done on a cloth by uh, Nagarjun, the artist seen in the picture and there are other people who helped me throughout my research to hold it um, and click photographs. Uh, so, uh, you can make a certain idea you can uh, create by that. These are some of the images that are from a very old tradition which is taken from the museum and these are done with the same style with some epics and we can make out that these were some of the uh, other styles which are very close to the regular practices that we get to see in today's time. Uh, they are there in these pictures. So, just view the examples and try to get familiar with this particular style and recognize them, remember them. They are of course, very memorable. There is another tradition which is known as Matani Pacheri of Gujarat that also follows a similar uh, principle that we make the mother goddess figure on the cloth. They are often using the block prints that is another Kalamkari tradition that was not practiced in Sri Kala Hasti, but it was more popular in another zone called Machali Patanam. Uh, now, in Gujarat also we see that they are using the same tradition. Uh, they partially block print uh, certain areas and then they fill it up with a uh, uh, kalam and they fill it up with some rust or maroon color. So, uh, since uh, you know, it is like something where we see that the workers are dedicated to the mother goddess and her worship, chiefly the Chitaras and the Devi Puja community uh, who do the practice of this folk art uh, in Vansa and on the outskirt of Ahmedabad. Chitaras who are involved in reviving this ancient temple craft called Matani Pacheri using the Kalamkari technique. Traditionally, these works were displayed only on temples in Gujarat. The temple cartons or the backdrops became significant records of the various myths and legends associated with the living tradition of the people. Matani Pachedi or Mata no Chandervo or the Chandar, the Chadar or the wrapper means the temple cloth on 
the display uh, which pertains specially to the mother goddess cult. They always have a central figure consisting of the pattern that uh, and the commanding form of goddess Durga in various iconographic forms, but they also use a lot of patterns which are secular. It has the trees, mostly the Kalpataru or the Vish tree and uh, it is also connected to some of the deities that symbolizes blood sacrifice as a sacred feature of Mata or the Mother Goddess worship. So, let us get familiar with the different traditions, we are not going to get de like deeper into the study right now, but just getting familiar with its outer look by looking at the quality of its uh, the elements of the and uh, understanding the visual principles what gets depicted there. Seen in the picture are the examples of Tanjore painting. The Tanjore school of art was born on the banks of river Kaveri in South India. It developed out of the Bhakti movement long after the unification of the two great factions of Hinduism, the Shaivites and the Vaishnavites. However, it is to be noted that even the Vedas have a mention of Ratan Jadit Chitra or the jewel uh, embedded paintings. The Tanjur school flourished under the royal patronage of the Maratha kings of Tanjur. Uh, that is in itself a historical incident and reached its pinnacle during the rule of Sir Foji Maharaj, a great patron for Tanjur painting. Later, it fell on bad days during which the workmanship suffered. During the early 18th century, when Tanjur was under the patronage of the Maratha rules, the Tanjur art developed. Tanjur, which is the name of Tanjavur, uh, about 300 kilometers from Chennai. Tanjore was a capital of the Chola kingdom, which was made significant contributions to Indian art and architecture. The art form was uh, distinct for its personality, which is painting style, which is a mix of formal and folk art. Because it has a royal patronage, we can see that there is some kind of a glorification in its uh, execution, where they used a whole lot of jewels uh, and the artwork looked much more glossier than a Kalamkari painting, but there are certain visual affinity uh, that is very distinctively identified. The visual art of Tanjavur school had its growth and development over a long period from 1700 to 1900 century. The genesis of Tanjura dates back to the early 18th century or probably even before and it is a unique culmination of several influences. Integration of the art forms of Mysore as well as Andhra is fairly evident and apparent in these pictures. Tanjur art is a natural extension of the skill of Tanjur craftsmen. The art is more skill oriented and it demands a lot of attention on the fineness and perfection. Perhaps due to the royal patronage that it enjoyed throughout its uh, peak phase, the art is fundamentally iconic and the theme is normally based on Hindu gods and goddesses and very rarely on heroes. The style and modality have undergone some minor variations due to the contemporary demands. The visual art of the Tanjavur school had its growth and development over a long period from 1700 to 1900. With its peak during the region of Sir Foji Maharaj, uh, who ruled during 1797 to 1833, it is a unique mixture of the Bhakti cult and the ability to present the same in an attractive manner. It is basically iconic with the popular Hindu gods forming the central theme. If the painting depicts an event from Hindu mythology, 
then the main figure is supported by the number of smaller figures to bring out the reality of the event. While it does not call for major innovation or creativity, it does call for skill, fineness and perfection. Some of the popular themes are the coronation of Rama, Krishna eating butter and Devi. We should also get uh, familiar with another very significant but not so well known form uh, which is uh, famous as Kalamanzatu or Kalam Elatu from Kerala. Uh, this is a tradition or a complete ephemeral performance that takes place during the Bhadrakali uh, worship in Kerala and what we see that uh, it just uh, too ephemeral and it stays for a very little while. It all starts with the worship of Bhadrakali where the drama community like painters from the drama community they paint the image of Bhadrakali on the floor in a huge scale. The drummers also uh, uh, like uh, encourage the painters to paint and they accompany them with their drum beats throughout and after a while it creates a trance like condition where the painters would paint and the drummers will play their drums and they reach a climax. At the end of it when the worship gets over they put their offerings on all those images and by the time the worship is over the image has also to be destroyed completely. So, this is one uh, tradition that needs a uh, very special documentation because we cannot get to see it, but it is all about how it gets created and destroyed in the same go and during a performance. So, we will try to see that and understand that with some of the uh, examples that are there. Seen in the picture is how the painters develop the images of Bhadrakali in a very large scale and how they do it together. Uh, it is not an individual practice, it is done by many people together. The drawing is done directly with the hand uh, that is without using any tool whatsoever. The powders used are all natural from vegetable or mineral or combined sources. The usual items used are rice, turmeric, yellow, charcoal from paddy, husk, black, blend of turmeric powder and lime that yells into a red color and powdered leaves that gives a green color. Although several leaves are found suitable, the most commonly used are those of Albizera Lebec. Even Eventually, the drawing develops with the central line drawn with a black white powder. The color feeling is done by the drummers. The layers grow gradually towards it and slowly the artists who are the traditional drummers, uh, they develop a uh, sound to complement it. Grains and other offerings are to be piled in in and around the painting is the allotted places. The space is seen decorated with garlands and fire lamps. Lighting is of utmost importance in this rituals. The drawing starts at selected time and are to be erased immediately after the worship is over. We see a significant uh, influence of Kalamanzatu and its practice in the mural of Kerala and the adjoining areas where the artwork stays for a very short while, but the viewers they carry it further and they use the similar kind of techniques uh, and the similar kind of uh, qualities of it in the mural paintings which is done uh, on the wall and with some other variations. So, let us see the contemporary murals of Kerala and how Kalamanzatu uh, has its influence on that. 
so there are close connections as far as the visual and also the thematic uh, contents are concerned, but it is very important to get familiar with them. So, here we see a contemporary uh, artwork, uh, these are the murals um, in Dakshin Chitra made by the mural painters of Kerala and the use of colors, the linear qualities, the formations are traditional and the expressions are also very, very sophisticated and fine, but the subject matter of course, it is not something which is connected to the secular themes though it is contemporary, but it still following the traditional theme as its subject matter. So, with that we may uh, raise a few questions at this point and that will help us to understand the issue in a, in a much greater detail. One is that can Indian art in its folk tradition be codified? How do we make definition of Indian art? in its folk and minor form. Do the sporadic art practices share a common connection? Do they hold a common entity? Is it the religion and cultural value that operates the homogeneity in practice or the universal rules of visual aesthetics that gives it a prominent identity as a whole? With those questions in mind, holding them we will continue with our next lecture.